we're taking the opportunity to talk with coaches from all across the state because we can, because it's not like they've got a whole lot to do these days. Uh, and, and one of the guys we've been trying to get on for a while is the head coach of the Flatonia Bulldogs, which won by Coach Chris, Chris Freitag. Coach, how you doing? Wonderful, Greg. How you doing? Excellent. Uh, you know, first and foremost, the, the most important question, uh, how, how are you? How are your family? How, how are things uh, down there for, uh, for, for you guys uh, with this uh, crisis? Well, so far, everybody uh, in my family uh, is well. Uh, I think in the town, you know, we've have, we have a few cases in the county, uh, but don't really, haven't really hurt anybody in the town. Uh, I think everybody's doing a good job of doing what we're supposed to do, social distance, uh, you know, don't touch your face, wash your hands. Um, it's, it's one of those deals. It's, it's just a weird times, but right now uh, we're, everybody's uh, fairly healthy and, and we're thankful for that. Speaking of uh, strange times, you know, you're still trying to run a football program. Uh, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't go away. I'm, I'm interested in, in, in how you've uh, maintained a, a connection with your guys, how you've maintained a connection uh, with, with, with your athletes. Well, you know, I use the Remind app. Uh, it, it's the way to communicate for, for me to my athletes. I've sent them numerous workouts, uh, body weight workouts, stuff like that. Uh, man, I'd love to have the weight room open. I know we can't. Uh, it's just part of it. it. It's what we're doing. Uh, I saw a lot of kids yesterday. My wife uh, is making me walk because apparently I'm gaining too much weight or something, or I don't really know how it goes, but that's just what I have to do. So I did see a few kids uh, out and about on the streets yesterday, uh, staying away from each other, uh, but they were throwing football. Uh, you know, I told them, guys, be careful. You know, you, you just never know. Uh, you can go to, you know, pump gas and, and get this stuff. So watch what you touch and, and watch what you share, even if it's a football. Uh, but it was good to see some of the kids yesterday. And, and, and we're thinking of creative ways of, of, of staying in contact with kids. But, you know, we're a small town. Uh, you know, some of our kids uh, don't have a whole lot of money. So some of the technology services that we can offer here are different than other places. Uh, so right now I just try to send positive messages because, you know, nowadays all kids have phones. Uh, tell them keep working. Uh, keep the vision and, and, and keep going and we'll get through this and we're going to be stronger. Yeah. Cause I think it's interesting in talking with coaches that it, it seems like everyone's trying to strike that balance between uh, obviously first and foremost is making sure everybody stays healthy and that we, we can, we can, you know, make this as, as, uh, as, as safe for everybody as possible. But at the same time, you know, there are football games that, that should be coming around in August. And, and so uh, do you find yourself trying to strike that balance between, you know, yes, obviously the most important thing and also, hey, you know, let's, let's try to work out, let's try to, try to continue to get better? That, that is a, always a balance that, you know, you have as a coach, uh, but now it's especially uh, out there. It, it, it's, it's big. I don't want to put too much pressure on our kids right now. Uh, they're getting packets today. There's some online learning stuff going academically. Uh, you know, we're serving more than 50% of our meals that we normally serve in the cafeteria to kids. We have 600 and something kids in the entire school. We're serving over 300 a day. Uh, we're helping, a lot of the coaching staff's helping with that. Uh, those are the big things. Uh, this other stuff that I send workout wise, uh, tweets, uh, all that good stuff that makes kids know that we're still thinking of them. Uh, you know, those are big. You know, I want to enforce to our kids that right now, be as healthy as we can, be as smart as we can. Uh, you know, if you need something from us, we're here to help. Uh, I'm worried about football because that's my job. And in, in, in August or September, hopefully when all this is over, people will forget this and they're going to be worried about football. And, and, and I can't wait for that. I mean, we, we are all right now, uh, a guy like you and a guy like me, this is unprecedented. I mean, we can't watch baseball. We can't watch golf. We can't, I can't go to, for years, I've been doing this 10 years, uh, for, you know, as athletic director. I've been going to two baseball games a week, a track meet a week, powerlifting, a golf tournament, and now I'm at home every day, and I'm like, what do I do? And, that, you know, that's no offense to my wife, but that's what I love to do. I go love to watch kids compete. So it's different for everybody, but hopefully in August uh, we can get rolling and, and ready to roll, baby. I can't wait. 
It's uh, it's strange times for everybody. Chris Freitag of the Platonian Bulldogs join us here on Texas Football Today. Get involved in the conversation at hashtag TF today. Uh, all right, let's talk about happier things like your 2019 Bulldogs. Uh, it, it was an unbelievable year for you guys. 11 and two, the first double digit win season there in Flatonia since that state championship game run back in 1988. Um, was there a turning point for you? Was there a moment maybe during the season or even in the preseason where you looked at, at things and you go, man, maybe we've got a little something cooking here? I thought we had some big early wins. Uh, you know, we, we, we beat Schulenberg and, and then we went on to play Weimer. And the Weimer week was the week before district. Um, you know, our, our running back to Corey Willis, who had a wonderful year. He's a wonderful kid. He's going to TLU to play football. Uh, we're really happy for him. Uh, when he didn't play in that Weimer game and we were in a one possession game, the entire game and, and actually didn't make a few plays that we should have made after that game, I was very disappointed. We lost, but I told our coaching staff guys, we're going to be a tough out, you know, and, and, and that's really what you want to do is get into that big tournament and, and fight and claw for everything you can and, and we had an epic third round game against Bremond, uh, probably one of the better games of the year. And 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 that that Weimer game was really the game I said we got a chance to be pretty darn good. Well, you guys were certainly pretty darn good. I think that that's fair to say. And and now looking forward to uh, uh, to twenty twenty, it seems like you guys are uh, uh, you guys are going to be even even stronger. Looking at what you guys have back, you know, one thing I'm always interested in, in talking with coaches. Uh, you guys run the split back veer. This is this is old school football, baby. Um, I, I always like talking with coaches who run offenses like this about how you motivate your guys to run this offense. I think you see so many, you know, these guys are watching the NFL or watching college football. They're throwing the ball all over the field. You guys are three yards in a cloud of dust. You guys are, you guys are old school. How do you, how do you get your kids to buy in on something? And I think especially a, a, a scheme that's maybe not predicated on making superstars. And, and I, and I that's a great question. Uh, we're split back beer, but we do a lot of other things. We can throw the ball. You know, we went to the state tournament last year, seven on seven. That's important to us to be able to throw the ball because when people load the box, we can, you know, we're just not one dimensional. dimensional. Uh, so, but how do you, you just tell the kids this is best, you know, we're going to adapt around our kids. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, Greg, in about 2012, uh, I thought I was a spread coach. I was under Coach Sign, who does a wonderful job at Johnson City. And, and I got to look in and I said, you know what? Uh, we're not doing very good. And I was, about my second or third year, I probably should have been fired, but they didn't fire me. I'm not sure why. But anyways, uh, I said, you know, I looked, I looked around and I said, what teams are successful? And, and Shiner, of course, in our district, I looked at what they did. East Bernard, uh, you know, the year after the Brock run has started, you got Omaha Paul Pewitt, you got Gunner, you got a Referio this year, ran the ball. You look at teams that have been successful, I would say from big school 3A down, a lot of those teams run the football, you know, and, and consistently run the football. It might be slot T, wing T, split back veer. Uh, they might get in two by one and, and run power, 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 400 different ways. But these teams are running the football and being physical. And I tell our kids, guys, if we can be physical on offense, since both, most of our kids go both ways, it's going to lead over to the defensive side and everything. And I think that's been a great compliment to each other is our offensive mentality has went to our defense mentality and defense has went to our offense. And it, it's been really successful. Uh, you know, if, if we don't have – we're not loaded with talent. Uh, we just have some good, hardworking kids that, that we teach – what to do and how to execute and they do it to their best ability. And we've been fortunate enough to be successful. How do you think that you you're now uh, entering, I think year 10 there in Flatonia, is that correct? 11. 11. It'll be year 11. You just finished your 10th year. Um, it's a long time. How, how have you seen this program change uh, maybe from, from when you first stepped foot there in, in, to, to now? When I first stepped foot, you know, they're coming off some losing seasons. It, it's a change. The mentality was changed. Uh, overall, the program wasn't very successful in, in all sports. And in, in a small school, 
I believe that winning breeds winning. And so, uh, you know, we were successful in baseball. And we've always been successful in baseball. Uh, I just feel that we got a group of coaches in here that had the same vision in all sports. And it just carried over. They believe in the program we run. They believe in the weight room. And that all has led year after year after year. And then you get some success in football. And kids start to, kids start to enjoy football again. Kids don't like going one and nine, Greg, you know, but when you start going second and third round, those kids are, man, this is what it's for. And they realize what you do in August and, and not just August, what you do in May and June and July lead to this great time of your life, which is Thanksgiving football. And now that's kind of become a tradition. We've played on Thanksgiving five straight years. And so our kids expect it. You know, when I first took over, you know, there was kids – not doing anything. And now I walk down the street and there's footballs in the air all the time. I can't keep kids off this field over here. Uh, so I, I don't know. It's just, a, it, it just evolves. And sometimes you don't have words to explain how it happens, uh, but I'm really proud. And, and I'm really proud of this town that, that now embraces the game of football and we're going to have our best numbers ever this year and we're going to need them. <laughs> Uh, well, you mentioned – you led me right into it. Let's talk about realignment. Um, <laughs> uh, well, you guys are moving up. You're moving from Division Two up to Division One, and um, there are teams that had soft landings, and then there's teams that had hard landings, and then there's y'all uh, into uh, a district with Shiner, Ganado, Weimer, Schulenberg. Uh, the, the, all, as a whole, the district averaged 9.8 wins per team last year. Uh, this is a brutal district. Any way you slice it, uh, I, I'm interested kind of in, in your read on the district. And, and when, you, when you saw things roll out like this, what, what was your reaction? First of all, I would thought I was a genius and I had it figured out where we were going before this happened. And <laughs> it wasn't quite like this. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you, didn't, you, didn't get, you didn't plan on being put into one of the toughest districts at any level in the state? I knew that we were going to be with Weimer and Schulenberg because we're all within 10 miles. And I thought Shiner might go south, but anyways, they didn't. We ended up in the district we're in. Uh, my thoughts, we've done it before. In 2015, we did it. We went three rounds. Uh, it was a tough district in state. Then it's a tough district in state now. Uh, the only difference, we had Referio back then. Uh, so, you know, our kids – at one point, I, I would have been worried that, that maybe they were like, oh, here we go. You know, you know we're going to be the – or since we have 170 kids in our high school and everybody else is bigger than us, we're going to get taken to the woodshed. Uh, this group, no. This group is going to compete. Uh, they're going to be battle-tested in our non-district. We have Tidehaven, Fall City, Mart, Stockdale. I mean, we're going to have our kids battle-tested. Uh, when we get to district – it's going to be so competitive, competitive and physical each week, uh, you know, but our kids are going to know that that they've seen it. Uh, it's, it's the way we play. It's no different. Uh, but you know, they could have probably put us in a dis different district and I'd have been okay with it. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, you know, I got some good friends as coaches in this district and they just shake their head too. coach McGyver and Weimer, who's done a wonderful job with that program. Uh, you know, we were texting each other that morning. He goes, are you, you know, or actually we are in the same region center. He said, are you believing this? I said, oh yeah, why not? Uh, it's it's going to be fun to watch. I'll tell you that much. You know, no, no matter what, every single week, it's going to be must see uh, there in district 13 to a uh, division one. He's Chris Freitag. He's the head coach of the Flatonia and Bulldogs. Uh, follow him on Twitter at uh, Freitag coach. Coach, really appreciate your time. Uh, congratulations again on a fantastic 2019. Please stay safe, uh, and we'll be talking to you down the road. Hey, Greg, appreciate what you guys do for us, and, and you guys stay safe as well.